Everyone need free diapers. What size you need? Black moms, moms of color don't always have access to diapers, to cradles, to things that you know are, are easier to access for others. This isn't just a nappy giveaway. This grassroots group comes with supplies and a message. One that's grim but important and statistically more likely to affect these women. They are more at risk of having serious complications or dying after giving birth. What we're trying to do is get the word out and educate everyone on black maternal health because black mothers are uneducated about birth. It's surprising, but now I know that there are a lot of mothers that don't know. It's about medical bias and discrimination. Um, it's about pregnant black women not feeling heard or seen. My name is Tori Bowie and you know I represent Team USA. 32-year-old Olympic sprinter Tori Bowie knew the statistics around childbirth for black mothers, but friends say she was really excited to welcome her first child. In early May of this year, at around eight months pregnant, she died from complications of childbirth. Her high-profile death once again raised the issues around black maternal health in the United States. Tori was so full of joy. Like she was a firecracker, a human firecracker. Her teammate Tiana Madison, formerly known as Bartoletta, posted on social media to say three out of four women on this Olympic relay team have nearly died or died in childbirth, including her. What really was a problem for me was that the doctors were dismissive of my concerns when I alerted them that I was dying, especially as an Olympian who's made it a career of knowing what her body is doing at any given time. While maternal deaths in America are still relatively rare, they are on the rise. In 2020, nearly 900 women were reported to have died from maternal causes. And in 2021, that increased by 40% to just over 1,200 deaths. But black women are more likely to die than any other racial group, more than twice as likely than white women. While lots of women who watch are empathetic, some of them do say that lots of women have awful experiences in childbirth. It's not just uh, black women. The statistics are the statistics, right? We're dying in larger numbers. So the, what we are bringing awareness to is the disparity. Yes, there are white women that die in childbirth, but a black woman going to give birth should not automatically, just because she's black, be more likely to die. That's what we're talking about. Mr. Speaker, today I rise to speak about the Black Maternal Health Momnibus. It's a disparity that's been brought up on the national stage. The Momnibus is a multi-part bill introduced to Congress to improve maternal health, particularly among ethnic groups who are affected. Representative Lauren Underwood, who's a registered nurse, says it doesn't matter where you come from or how much money you have, black mothers are still among the worst off. We're seeing disparities even among people who have great health care coverage, got prenatal care, right? All these factors that would be protective uh, for white moms are not protective for black moms or Native American moms. And so at its core, we're talking about systemic racism within our health care system. And what we want people to know is not only do we have a maternal health crisis in the United States, but it is getting worse. As a black woman, yes. getting this legislation through, just yes. how personal does this feel? Oh, it's very personal. Um, in early 2017, I had a good friend from graduate school, Dr. Shalon Irving, who gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Three weeks later, she died due to complications related to high blood pressure. She had good health care coverage. She did everything right, and we lost her. I don't have an expectation that this will be easy, but I do have an expectation that we will be successful. But Tiana Madison is less hopeful. Her experience and the death of her friend has left a mark, one so severe that it's affected her future. As of right now, my partner and I are unwilling to have another child. And I struggle with that because I feel on some days that that makes me a coward. Until the outcomes are better, I, I'm just not willing to go through that again and that trauma. Making the tough decision to not have another child or worrying about fairness in the healthcare system are some of the biggest concerns black mothers in the United States are facing right now. You're welcome. She appreciate this.
those who are fighting for change say they don't want this to be passed down to the next generation. What they want is equality for everyone who gives birth. That report by Aisha Tull in the United States. Now, higher rates of maternal mortality amongst black women isn't just an issue in the U.S. Here in the U.K., black women are up to four times more likely to die in pregnancy and childbirth than white women. Earlier, I spoke to the Labour MP and black maternal health advocate, Belle Ribeiro Addy. First, I asked her why this was happening. For a long time now, and we're talking as, as much as a few decades, we have seen um, these statistics remain fairly consistent. And one of the things that is very, very clear that it absolutely has to do with institutional racism, there is no other reason why we would see such a direct correlation between what's happening in the US and what's happening in the UK, and quite specifically uh, to, to black mothers and, and other mothers of, of, of other ethnic origins. We know that for every 30 midwives that we train in this country, 29 actually end up leaving the profession. So we have a crisis of workforce in the NHS, but there is definitely institutional racism at play. And we're seeing that this is happening to black women, um, regardless of their socioeconomic mm. status and their educational level. So this is not about poverty rates. This is not about access to the right kind of health care. It's something else. Well, what I would say is it's definitely exacerbated by um, access to the right kind of health care. So, for example, you're more likely to see issues with maternity overall in poorer areas of the country um, and, and, you know, worse outcomes in poorer areas of the country. But we're saying it must definitely be an issue of racism because it's also happening uh, to people who yeah. don't necessarily su suffer dire socioeconomic um, um, circumstances. And when you say this is down to institutional racism, Give me some practical examples of how that works out. Well, we're seeing uh, women going into maternity units, not being treated um, with a certain level of respect, ask, it, ask certain questions which are quite uh, stereotypical in terms of, of, of their race. Uh, we've seen people, for example, not necessarily given, given scans at the right time because there are perceived concerns about whether or not um, they may be looking into what gender uh, child they have because they may appear to be to be Muslim and they think uh, that, that that's something that happens in that particular the community that there's an issue of sex selection. Women are finding when they're going for 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 their maternal treatments and 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 and, and just generally when they're about to give birth, that there are all of these issues that point towards the way in which they're being treated, which are clearly racism. I mean, the NHS is not on this program. We haven't uh, got an interview with them about this, but they would probably say everyone, regardless of their race, uh, has equal access to those services, to those maternity services, and that they don't discriminate. Well, that is what they're saying, but there's a difference between having equal access and being treated with institution, with an institution treating you in a racist way once you are accessing said services. It's not just about whether or not you can get them, it's your experience of them overall. And one of the things that I would say that we're lacking is, is very, very comprehensive uh, 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 an analysis of what women are experiencing. And that's why so many other organisations have had to go out and do their own research mm. and and. and, and show that actually the experiences that black women ha are having are, are leading directly to their deaths or the deaths of their babies. And it's very concerning that despite a very, very thorough report put together by the Women and Equality Select Committee of the House of Commons, one on which I sit, um, that we found that the government actually refused to set a target. And one of the reasons that was given to me, having spoken up about this in the House of Commons, was that, you know, th these numbers are simply not high enough. And I think that's a disgraceful response. I mean, tell, you know, mothers um, that, that have lost their babies and families that have lost their mothers who died in childbirth, that those numbers are not high enough mm. to set a target. If I could completely change tack at the end of the interview and ask you about the by-election in uh, South Ryslip and uh, Uxbridge uh, the other day, so the Tories held on to that seat with a very slim majority because at the end of the day, it was all about the ULEZ. And now the Labour leadership had said that Sadiq Khan should reconsider his ULEZ expansion, right? What do you make of that? Do you think he should or should he stick to it? Um, I think that is a matter that's far above my pay grade. You're talking about You're a London the MP. mayor of London. And you're talking about the leader of the Labour Party. I think we should always consider uh, what it is that is in the best interests of, of the public. And sometimes those are, 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 are measures that protect the environment. And sometimes are, those are measures um, that we may 
reconsider depending on how much it's going to cost them. Bel Rivera Abbey, thank you very much indeed.